Theresa May is still chairing a meeting of her cabinet in Downing Street to discuss that major speech on Brexit, which she's going to be delivering in Italy tomorrow. The Prime Minister has insisted that the government is working together to get the best deal for Britain, despite the Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson setting out his own vision for Brexit in a recent newspaper article. Let's head back to Downing Street. Chris Mason is still there for us. And Chris, I can't remember exactly when it was I asked you, uh, is the meeting nearly over? But clearly that was premature of me, wasn't it? Uh, because it's still going on. Clearly, there's a lot to talk about. But are you surprised that they're still in there? Yeah, I, I am surprised that they're still uh, in there. Cabinet meetings do not tend to last this long. Now, we don't know the specifics of what is being talked about, talked about uh, around that table. But... It's, it's difficult not to speculate that when you're in the context of a meeting lasting as long as this, two and a half hours now, uh, that clearly there's obviously uh, substantial things that substantial people around that table want to say uh, about the content of what is accepted is a very substantial speech. There was a bit of a flurry of activity here about 45 minutes ago now when some of the drivers for the ministers uh, came out of the building and took up their positions again back behind the wheels of the... Uh, various electric cars and Jaguars and, and all the rest of it, but still, 45 minutes on from that, still no sign of them uh, coming out. As I say, I think it does point, whilst obviously we don't know what is being talked about in specific terms, it, it does point to a uh, substantial discussion going on. Uh, and we were chatting earlier, Chris, and I was uh, asking you, uh, well, we were discussing uh, uh, the point of whether Theresa May will have presented the speech to the Cabinet as a, as a fait accompli, or whether she was still very much open to suggesting questions for changes and uh, the length of this meeting would certainly suggest that the latter might be happening. Yes, it would. It, it would. It, the, the implication had been that whilst, yes, some cabinet ministers were seeing uh, the, the latest draft, if that's what it's turned out to be, for the, for the first time it's in, in its entirety uh, this morning, whilst some had seen uh, the drafting process going on uh, for the last uh, few weeks, the assumption was that there wouldn't necessarily be radical amendments made between uh, now and the point that the speech is delivered in roughly 24 hours' time in uh, Florence. But you get some sense, not just from the news coverage of the last week, and those 4,100 and something words that Boris Johnson penned for the Daily Telegraph and then the remarks over the summer from the Chancellor Philip Hammond, both pointing towards rather different flavours of Brexit as far as uh, they would like uh, to see them. Here we go, the coming meeting breaking up. I'm just going to step out of the shot. Here are all the nest of singing birds. So that the uh, Defence Secretary, Sir Michael Fallon, uh, leaving the uh, Downing Street meeting, which uh, suggests that the Cabinet now has uh, broken up. Uh, another car just to my right here, to your left, moving into uh, position, uh, and a number of other car engines firing up, which suggests the meeting uh, has concluded. Sir Michael Fallon does a... Mr Grayling, have you signed off the speech? Why did Cabinet last so long? Did you like what you saw? That's David Gork there, the uh, Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. Jeremy Hunt, the Health Secretary. That was a long meeting, Mr Hunt. Was it a bit of a Barney? Yes. Are you all on board with the Prime Minister's speech tomorrow? Were you impressed with what you saw? So... That is the life of a political correspondent on the morning of a cabinet meeting, shouting lots of vaguely inane questions in the direction of cabinet me me ministers and almost always never getting much more than a smile uh, in response. Pretty much all of the heavyweights now left, although no sign yet of uh, Boris uh, Johnson. So there may be a few more departures to come. Another car uh, pulling up uh, in front of the door, I think. Oh, no, it's just paused outside uh, number uh, 11 uh, instead. But, yeah, I make that two and a half hours because the meeting started just shortly after uh, 10 o'clock uh, this morning. Two and a half hours. I can't actually remember a Cabinet meeting in, rec in the recent past that lasted uh, as long uh, as that one. I've tasked one of my colleagues back at our newsroom to see if we can find out when the last cabinet meeting that was longer than this took place but this one certainly falling into the category marked long and, and the fact that everyone's come out completely tight-lipped well that may well suit Theresa may ahead of the speech tomorrow and um chris we we were just reporting the news of the death of the former conservative mp sir teddy taylor who people may remember quit as a 
a Scottish office minister in 1971 over Edward Heath's decision to join what was then the common market. And it underlines, doesn't it, the, the decades of opposition or the decades of um, angst, if you like, that the Conservative Party has gone through over whether uh, it's going to support being a member of the bloc or not. Yeah, absolutely. It, it really plays into that when we reflect on the, the life of uh, Teddy Taylor, how long the conversation has been going on, uh, particularly within the Conservative Party, about the very awkward relationship that the UK uh, has had with what is now the European Union. And that is an awkwardness that predates the UK's membership uh, in the early 1970s, because Teddy Taylor was Are someone who was passionately... Uh, it's a big smile, Mr Johnson. Did you get what you wanted? Is Philip your, best, your new best friend? How come you had to meet for so long? So yes, yet more uh, shouted questions. Quite striking the choreography there that uh, Mr Hammond and Mr Johnson decided that they would depart uh, together, uh, given that in many senses they have represented and personified the two polar opposite views uh, around the cabinet table about the flavour of Brexit uh, that we might end up with. And interestingly, Nick Timothy, the former chief of staff here in Downing Street, to Theresa May, or joint chief of staff, up until the general election, had a pop at both Mr Johnson and Mr Hammond for going on manoeuvres, as he described it, in a column uh, in the Daily Telegraph today. Just to briefly, I need to return to my reflections on Teddy Taylor and apologise that I broke off from reflecting on his life to, to shout at a couple of cabinet uh, mi uh, ministers leaving there. Yeah, his career and his career-long uh, opposition to the idea of European political integration speaks to how long the concern has been within Conservative circles and beyond them about our very awkward relationship with what is now the European Union. He stood down, as you were saying, uh, as a, a minister, a Scottish office minister in the 1970s when Ted Heath was keen to take the UK into the European uh, economic community. He became what was known as one of the whipless wonders of the 1990s where John Major uh, basically kicked out uh, some of his own MPs from the Conservative Parliamentary Party because of their steadfast opposition to the uh, Maastricht Treaty which created the European Union and uh, set up the framework for the creation of the, the single currency, uh, the euro. So whilst he'll have cheered uh, at the result of the referendum, Teddy Taylor, uh, last year, his career and his lifelong opposition to uh, European integration also speaks to how deep-seated the current rows that we see around the Cabinet table are in a more broader historical sense. OK, Chris, thank you very much for all of that. Chris Mason in Downing Street, a real flurry of Cabinet Ministers leaving number 10. And uh, as Chris was mentioning, uh, as far as he can re recollect, one of the longest uh, Cabinet meetings he can remember.